So I've added some more details to the flower using the techniques that I've already shown you in previous videos. So I shall just run through what I've actually done here. So firstly, we've done some more couching of our Japanese thread. So that's the same technique that's down the stem here. And I've worked this centre petal first and I've taken two strands together around the outside of the petal, plunging them where they meet the pearl pearl here. And then I've taken another row on the inside, leaving a space between the two and again plunging them down at the pearl pearl. And you should be able to see there another row of the silver Rococo thread that we used in our curls here, just to add some interest in there with a different colour. You'll also notice here that I've used a different colour to couch them down with. I've used a purple embroidery thread. You can use any colour you like at this stage. Um, and I've also done the same here, another purple row here, Japanese couch thread, and another one here. And then I've just used a single one. You would normally couch them down together, but just to get a smaller, delicate detail, I've just put one in here. just allows you to put more definition in there. So one of those on each side. And then lastly, I've just filled in every other petal here with some more chips so this is the same as the chips we did in the center but instead of packing them in tightly i've just spread them out a little bit so start closely at the bottom here and just spread them out as you work your way up the petal and i've done that in all four here just to finish off my petals i'm going to show you what i've done at the bottom now i've got one more technique here to show you and this is called cut work and that's these pieces in here. And I'm just going to show you now how to work the cut work in this final leaf over here. Okay, so these are the wires that we're going to use to work our cut work in the leaf here. And this is one that we've used already. So this is a bright check pearl. And this is what we used for our chips earlier on the top of the flower. I'm going to use one that's very similar to it. It's called wire check pearl. Now, hopefully you can see the difference that this one has got a shine to it and this one is a bit flatter, a bit more dull. I'm going to use the difference between the two to give a bit of definition to this leaf. So I'm going to use the bright check pearl on the bottom and the wire check on the top. Now you'll need a double thread run through the beeswax with a knot in the end. That's a bit hard to find somewhere to start and stop when you get near the end of a piece. So I'm just going to put my knot next to my Rococo on the top. You can cut this off later, like so. And then again, start with your two small stab stitches straight up and straight down. Now you'll be able to see I've just marked on here where I'm going to lay my pieces of wire in the white. So I'm going to come up in the middle of this white line in the middle of the leaf. This will set the angle for all the other pieces, so start in the, in the middle. There's one small stitch and then another one next to that. Make these as small as you can. We're going to cover them up, but it will be easier if they're smaller. There's my two starting stitches. And I'm going to come up from the edge my Rococo. There, just be careful you don't stick your needle through the actual thread there. Not sure you can start further away with your needle and just step it in towards where you want to be. So that's where I'm going to thread on my first piece of metal. Now you'll need to cut this to length. So I'm going to use the bright check first. I'll just take the wire check out of the way. Now you have to just do this carefully. Place it in position. Decide how long you want that to be. And using your gold work scissors, sharp clean cut to length. It's a good idea at this point to cut yourself another one so you know how long the first one was. 
you don't have to guess each time. Now I'm actually going to just thread that onto the needle, place that in position, just check that I think that's the right length and I'm happy with that length. If you're not, you can just slide it to the end of your needle, cut a little bit more off, slide it back on. So take that piece carefully all the way to the bottom of your thread, like so. Slide that down in position. Great thing about this is you can check it before you stitch it in place. There's my white line and I'm going to take my needle down right at the end. This is a good time to use your malaw just to guide those down. They are two threads together and they have been whacked so they can twist. There's your first piece. So you need to cut your second piece to work next to it. So again, just step away from it, step in towards it. Your second. I've got one here I've cut, but I will just check that is the right length. So on the end of the needle, in position, Make sure you're happy with that, which I am. Slide it to the bottom of the thread. Lie that in place. Just pushing it to the end of the thread. Needle down right at the end. Just guide that thread into place. Carefully with the malaw. Do this very small piece on the end now. And this is a tiny little piece, but it's exactly the same method. Into the needle. It's not much longer than a chip, that one. If you find it these pieces catch on the thread when you're pushing them down, then just re-wax the thread. It's a small one at the bottom. Now I'm going to go up to here now and carry on with the top. You can jump your thread underneath from here to here, that's not very far. I wouldn't go any further than that, but that distance will be fine. Right, check the piece on the needle, check it's the right length. Happy with that. Slide to the bottom in place. Needle down at the end, just guide that down with the middle. Last piece of right check. Quite a small piece there. The hardest part about this is cutting them to the right length, so just take time to make sure you're happy with how long it is. If you cut one too short, you can always save it if you'll be able to use it somewhere else. Cut yourself another one. Right, there's all my bright check pieces and now we'll put in the wire check ones so exactly the same start at the top as in here go on in exactly the same way just try and get the points to meet in the center if you can Piece. I'm going to come away with my needle because there's a lot of gold in here now and if I bring my needle up too soon I might go straight through one of those pieces so I'm just going to be careful now to step my needle in make sure I don't damage anything that I put in. Once these are in they are quite easy to damage so 
still be careful even though you've slain them down. You can still damage them. That's that one there. Third piece of wire check there. Make sure it's in position before you take the needle down. Last large piece. Now I think that one's a tiny bit too short. I'm actually going to cut myself one more piece. Just a little bit longer. Save that piece for another occasion. That's better. So make sure you just take time to get these right. And then the last small piece on the end to join up with that piece of point. Check. These should all lie nice and flat. They shouldn't be sticking up. Sticking up probably too long. And there goes last piece. Now there's no more room to finish off your thread so the best suggestion is to turn over your piece and just weave it through the back as you did for finishing off your ends of your Japanese thread. And once you've done that you can just lift off that, that knot carefully, snip that off. And there you have your finished cut work. Okay, here's our finished piece. So here's the leaves that we've just finished down here. And I just want to show you how I finished this off in this frame here. So I've used one of these frames. It's like an embroidery frame, but just looks a bit nicer with a hanging hook on the top. And you can mount it in here exactly the same way as you would with a normal frame, two pieces. Um, Place your fabric in there. Try and get it in the right place first time because they're a bit harder to adjust than a normal frame. And that outer frame just goes tightly around the inner one, like so. It makes it nice and tight. And then on the back, I have just cut out a piece of felt. I used the frame as a template before I mounted it. So cut out a piece of felt in this oval shape. And you can just stitch that on to show you here how to do that. So you've got a nice finished back. It's always worth just covering the back so that nothing can get inside there and you've got it all protected. And there's the finished piece. There is a kit available, materials pack for this here. If you want to have a go at making this project yourself using all the previous videos. Um, and we've got in here, there's um, the purple fabric with the design already on it. A calico backing. You've got all your gold threads in there. You've got sewing threads for your gold and your silver, some um, needles as well to help you on your way. And that's available on my website, sarahomfrey.com. Hope you've enjoyed these set of gold work videos and join me again for some more soon.